Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to, for today's panel discussion. My name is Mohammad Israel Shohairi Ben Surya, and I am the chairman for today. And it is a great pleasure both to participate <coughs> the panel with our guests and to welcome you to this event. As we all know, nature is one of the gifts from God toward us human. It is something valuable for us, and we need to preserve it. But nowadays, the mother nature becoming one of the target of human greed and become in danger of being gone forever. So today we are going to have a talk about the topic of should we protect our nature with the suitable profession. Without further ado, let me introduce guests for today. From the left, one of the head researcher of research department of University Malaya, Professor Nur Fadilah binti Abu Karim. Next to her is the head researcher of nature, behavior, and ecosystem of University Science Malaysia. Hello, Professor Muhammad Hakim bin Harman. Next is the head of Department of Conserving and Preserving of Perhimpunan. Konichiwa. Nato Muhammad Ibti Sambi Isha. And last but not least, Miss Alia Najwa Binti Ramli, one of the active nature activists in Malaysia. Hi. <clears throat> Thank you for coming. So let's start our discussion with my first question. Um, Professor Fadila, what is the role of biodiversity in the natural environment? First of all, may I call you Israel? Uh, yes, you can call me. Okay, let me answer your question. Biodiversity is a very important issue in the context of the analysis of ecology, sustainable development and the protection of the natural environment, including, above all, the natural sites of biologically deposited ecosystems, for example, those characterized by high biodiversity. Maintaining biodiversity of natural ecosystems is one of the most important problems and tasks for people in the 21st century. Biodiversity consists in the cooperation of few species of plants, animals, fungi, bacteria and possibly other microorganisms. For example, in natural tropical rainforests, there is a lot of biodiversity because in this forest, there are many species of plants, animals, fungi and bacteria next to each other. Biodiversity is the largest unique, difficult to reproduce, unique value of natural, complex biological ecosystems. An example is the tropical forest in the Amazon. Oh, uh, that's so many roles of biodiversity in the natural environment, I see. Um, next, uh, I want to ask you, Professor, uh, in your opinion, what are the problems occurred by humans that are affecting the nature? Oh, there's many problems that us humans did affecting the mother nature, such as the, the activity of deforestation in sake of urbanization. This activity causing the wildlife lost their natural habitat. Due to this, the wildlife can't survive and becoming instinct and can't be seen anymore on the earth. Other human activity that affect the nature is the open burning and crops field burning activities. This activity releases the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and increasing the, the and increasing uh, and due to the deforestation that I mentioned earlier, the trees can't absorb the gas and causing the greenhouse effect becoming worse. In smaller scale, it will increase the local temperature. This will cause the activity of tour tourism in Genting Highland and Cameron Highland, which popular with the cool and moderate temperature, becoming devastated as the average temperature becoming hotter. On larger scale, it will cause the global warming and even make the South and North Pole melt and causing the increasing of sea level. It will make the lower level let us land and seashore becoming flooded and becoming the next Atlantis. Next is the overuse of pesticide and chemical fertilizing, fit chemical fertilizer in farming activity. When the farmer uses the chemical fertilizer and pesticide, it will increase the acidity of the soil. In long term, it will make the soil becoming too acidic and make the crops wither away. When it's rain, the water will carry the chemical into the river, into the nearby river, and poisoning the aqua the, the aquatic life and nearby ecosystem. This is why most ecologists and nature lovers prefer 
to use natural different fertilizer and minimizing the usage of pesticide in farming activities. Oh, uh, so there's many problems that humans do to nature, I see. Yes, there's a lot of it. Mm. Okay, um, next, Dato Iptisa. What is your opinion about the extinction of endangered species in Malaysia? Thank you to our moderator today, Momo Israel. All right, so when the issue of extinction of various wildlife is debate, there's a tendency to refer to the Department of Wildlife and National Parks without considering the burden. Uncontrolled development and the grip of a certain parties profit without considering the effects of forest habitat, unknowingly causing Malaysia to face the problem of extinction. Surprisingly, wildlife that statistics from year to year shown an increase of 7,451 in 2017 compared to 6,767 in 2016 and 6,258 in 2015 with Selangor, Juho and Perak recording the highest wildlife deaths of 1,745, 1,016 and 7,792. Statistic by Department of Wildlife Protection and National Parks. Uh, we can see, we can see this graph and statistics uh, from HWC records by state in 2012 until 2017. We can see uh, in Selangor, uh, uh, which is higher ranking in our peninsula Malaysia, uh, approaching 1,000 uh, until 1,000 in 2012 until 2017. We see that uh, our uh, Selangor is uh, the most endangered in our uh, peninsula Malaysia. For the most safely in our peninsula Malaysia is uh, Perlis, which is approaching uh, only 50 in 58 in in 2012 uh, until 2017. Uh, for the total of uh, the uh, endangered uh, wildlife in our peninsula Malaysia, approaching 3,838,200. 8, 36. Among the major contributing factors are the issue of poaching and illegal sale of wildlife that makes wildlife increasingly threatened by extinction. The 2017 statistics show the highest number of monkey species, which is 4,926 followed by forest pig, uh, which is 902, elephants 342, pandan wigs 326, birds 320, while more than 20 wildlife species such as belang tiger, bear, tapas, crocodiles, oars and others also record high this and threaten extinction. We can see another graph, another statistics from uh, HWC records by species in 2012 until 2017. We see uh, Kura is the most uh, gross rate uh, in 2012, uh, increasing until 2017, which is 3,235 until 4,927 for the most um, endangered wildlife which is Tenggilin uh, where, where is no gross rate in 2012 and 2013 but only 
one growth rate in 2014 and 2016 and only two growth rate uh, and the total is only two growth rate uh, from 2012 until 2017 so the total of species uh, that growth of rate is 38,236 in addition this situation is causing Malaysia to be listed as a dangerous country for endangered, endangered animals based on deforestation uh, for wildlife habitat due to poor property development, agriculture and illegal hunting and logging activities. Most species of animals are threatened with loss of suitable habitat, causing death or invention of human settlements and the, the danger of being killed by human. <coughs> Thank you, Datuk Ibtisam. Uh, next, I want to ask you, Miss Alia, as one of the active activists in nature in Malaysia, um, what do you think in uh, the roles of activists in order to save our nature? Thank you to our moderator, Mama Izrul. Okay, back to the question about the role of environmental activists. Many people may not know that activists play a huge role in order to, to protect the nature. As an activist, we play an important role to increase the environmental awareness among people. And how do we do that? We have a campaign to invite people to protect our earth from getting damage. For example, we have a recycling campaign. We advocate for reuse and the recycling of non-biodegradable products such as plastic, obsolete electrical equipment and many others. By doing this kind of campaign, many people will be aware of the effect of human activities on the environment. So now I would like to show the comparison between flood in Malaysia and Japan. This is Malaysia and this is Japan. In Malaysia, the river is full with plastic, rubbish and the color of the water is very dirty. Meanwhile, in Japan, even the flow water is very clean and no rubbish and plastic can be seen. Next is the comparison between Malaysia jungle and China jungle. Because of development, many logging activity was done. This had caused the tree becoming less from day to day. Meanwhile, in China, they they took care they took take good care of their jungle to avoid disaster and the loss of animal habitat. Next is uh, our role in legislation. The environmental activ activism has played a crucial role in influencing the legislature to enact law that aim to protect the environment. Activists may be within the government and impose the charge or even be involved in a, in a campaign whose main aim is intimidating the legislature to enact a certain law. Next is impact on developer. It has also led many developers to carry out their development plan in mind that they will be faced with legal challenges in case they cause any environmental pollution. Last but not least is conservation programs. <coughs> Some activists have influenced the creation <coughs> of innovative conservation programs such as that of the National Park and the Advocating for Ecotourism, which are great ways of conserving the environment. Thank you, Ms. Alia. Mm, okay, uh, back to Professor Fadila. Mm, <clears throat> does the current environmental destruction pose a threat to human welfare and prosperity? Okay, Israel. Does the current environmental destruction pose a threat to human welfare and prosperity? The answer to this question is undoubtedly yes, given the current state of knowledge, although this data interpretation occasionally has been criticized. Two components of environmental degradation have received disproportionately high attention, the effect of human activities on climate change and on depletion of biodiversity. There is now mounting evidence that this environmental disturbance alone could severely threaten human prosperity and that they possibly are already doing so. A direct depletion of natural capital is an additional severe problem regionally. 
Furthermore, ecological systems are buffered from the effects of disturbance to inherent resilience. Such buffering can lead to dramatic state shifts once, once critical levels of disturbance have been reached, which have three potentially disconcerting effects. First, because of limiting warning signs, prior to state shift, it can be exceptionally difficult to predict when they will occur. Second, it can be equally difficult to predict which state an ecosystem will shift into. Third, the reversal of a shift is often not symmetric, so that the disturbance has to be taken further back than the initial switching point for a new shift to occur. Since the current environmental degradation occurs on a global scale, we can expect that it may give rise to large-scale state shifts in the Earth's biota that could have potentially devastating effects on human societies. Okay, uh, thank you, Professor Fadila. Uh, Prof. Hakim, in your opinion, if we did not help to spread the awareness about nature, what would be the fate of our nature in the next 30 to 40 years from now? Hmm. In my opinion, if the awareness about nature did not be spread among our people, our nature would be gone in the next 30 or 40 years, or in fact, even faster. Looking at how the country development rate, I could say that it would not be impossible to say the future generation could not even spectate the living specimen of infamous Malayan tiger. Or worse, can't even have the chance to see the real-life Tualang tree. This year, we already had declared the Sumatra rhinoceros to be already extinct as the living specimen died in Endau Rompen National, National Park this year. Due to this, all ecologists, zoologists, scientists, and biologists are thinking what would happen to the rest of the wildlife of Malaysia if the problem continued to exist. Are the Sumatra rhinoceros the last one? Or will there be a next like wildlife to be extinct? I hope there will be there will be no more. <clears throat> Back to you, uh, Miss Alia. Is there any agencies that take part in order to protect our nature? Okay, first of all, environmental activism champion for the education of the population on the devastating effect of environmental degradation. They are also teach way in which they can conserve the environment. For instance, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration advocates for employees to be educated on the importance of conserving the environment. Next, through environmental activism, manufacture, manufacturing facilities are forced to follow the guidelines that are stipulated by Environmental Protection Agency on issues concerning reducing emission, limiting carbon footprint, reducing wastage, Enhancing energy efficiency, recycling or waste instead of using virgin material, and employing eco friendly innovative technologies, just to mention a few. All these are aimed toward green manufacturing as well as lean manufacturing. Moreover, the business and company that are close proximity to certain community settlement areas have the mandate to inform the people on the substance or harmful material that are emitted near them. This is regard to the comprehensive environmental response compensation and the liability act that was enacted as a result of environmental activism. Last but not least, the, activ the activists take part in major worldwide discussion such as Stockholm Conference and the, Uni Un the Uni United Nations Conference on environment and development. The main aim is finding alternative energy form and also solve conflict between the environmental protection and technology development aimed at improving the world economy while addressing climate change with regard to the greenhouse, greenhouse gas emission. Thank you, Ms. Alia. So, we can conclude that all of our guests are agree about our topic today. I hope our audience can take part in this matter to make sure our nature be protected. <clears throat> Thank you to our guests because they are willing to take part for our discussion today. So that's all from us. Thank you and keep protect our nature. Oh, no.
the wrong side of the ocean with all the tides against you you never thought you'd be much good for anyone but that's so far from the truth i know there's pain in your heart and you're covered in scars wish you could see what i do Cause baby